Hi everybody, Jeremy here from VGT Studio and today I'm going to show you 5 new transitions available in DaVinci Resolve 18.5 So if you're ready, let's check it out! Alright, so the first transition is a logo wipe transition. To find the transition, you can go over to Effect and then here you have Video Transition and we're going to search for Logo Wipe. Now, if I try to drag that directly on two clips that are on trim, it doesn't work. So make sure that you trim your clip to be able to apply a transition because you need to have that excess clip trimmed for any transition to be applied and work properly. So now we can just drop it in between the two clip and I'm gonna extend it a little bit. By default, if we play it now, we have a transition that is not a logo, but a text, but we can choose to have a logo instead. This transition is basically a wipe cross dissolve, but there is just some text or logo added to it. So you can make any alteration to the text that we just see on screen. For example, here we're going to write night and we're going to just change the font, we're going to just the size, the color, etc. But if you don't want to have a text and you want to have a logo instead, it's very easy. You can just prompt open here that custom logo tab and then you can just untick use text and we're going to use a logo instead. Right now there is no media, so it creates media offline. We're just going to scroll through our media pool and here I have a logo of DaVinci. I'm just going to take it and here drag it on the clip name. And now for players, we have the transition being a logo instead. We can easily reduce the size of that logo. We can play around here with the canvas edges. And there is a few more adjustments that you can make to the animation, the glow, and then here you have some wipe softness. So that reduces the softness of the transition between the first clip and the second clip. The second transition is called edgy. So here you can just search for edgy in your transition, take it and drag it in between your clip. Same thing, you need to have your two clip trimmed for the transition to be applied properly. This transition utilizes an edge detection effect that gets softened to go from the first clip to the second one. There is a few things you can modify with this transition. The first thing is the mode. So right now, if you leave it in RGB edges, the outline edges will just take the color of whatever is on screen. Right now, as you can see, if we extend, those edges are a bit orange, those are white slash blue, etc. If you want to choose your own color, you can just switch here to gray scale edge. And right now, for example, everything is white because that's what we have selected. But here, all two clips have some tones of blue in it. So we could just select, for example, cyan and use that as our outline, for example. And that will already give a different vibe to the transition. And you also have a few other possibilities that will affect the way the edges are affecting the clip. If you want them to have them sharp or blurry, um, if you want the brightness to be clipped or not, etc. I'm not going to go to the full extent on that. Let me know if you want to see a more in-depth video going through each parameter of each transition. The third transition is called Glow. So again, go to Video Transition, search for Glow, take your transition and drop it in between your two clips. In my opinion, this transition will tend to look better with any clip that got some flare in it. As soon as you get the flare coming into frame, that will be the perfect opportunity to just drop that transition and switch to another clip. For this transition, you can adjust the gain, which will affect basically the intensity of the glow. If you raise it, uh, it will just become more present in your frame. And if you reduce it, that will just be a bit more subtle. The glow scale will affect the softness of that glow. So same, if you increase it, you will get a softer glow. And if you decrease it, uh, your glow will be a bit less soft. Then here you have a red, green, blue and alpha channel that you can uh, modify to just temper with the color. For example, here adding some red to your glow, etc. Then the fourth transition is RGB splitter. So again, go over to your transition, search for RGB, and then you can just drag your transition in between your two clips. This transition is basically a mix between a cross dissolve transition and an RGB split where the red, green, and blue channel are not exactly at the same scale. So right now you can adjust the scale of each color. So here, for example, we could raise or reduce the scale of the red to the same thing for the green and same thing for the blue. If you want the effect to be more subtle, I will recommend to bring all those quite down. For example, here, we can just do one for this one, then 0.2 for this one, and then 0.3 for this one. And now the effect is not as pronounced. 
You can also add a motion blur by just ticking that box. You can choose the quality of your motion blur. Just keep in mind that it will be more resource intensive. And right now already, as you can see, I don't get a real time playback. So we'll probably need to cash in that transition. And our last transition is block glitch. So here we're going to search for block and we're just going to bring that in between our two clips. For this transition, you can make a bunch of modification to the blocks. So here, as you can see, the transition is made out of different blocks. We can choose the randomness of the way they are appearing right here with the block C. We can reduce or raise the size of those blocks with the frequency. So here, if I increase the frequency, we have more block and therefore they are getting smaller. And if I decrease it, we have less block and they are bigger. We can also adjust the aspect of those blocks. So right now they are rectangular on more of a vertical axis. If I were to increase here the aspect, they will just start to stretch. And if I reduce the aspect, they will just stretch, but this time vertically. You can choose how random the color change will affect the image by here playing around with the color random seed. And then you have the resolution. If you increase uh, the resolution slider, as you can see, your image will get mushy and pixelated, which is something that you might want if you're trying to reproduce some kind of VHS transition. And that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contain over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.